Whew. All right, man, time for this quick banger. Yeah, what up, gang? What up, squad? It's your boy, Ethereum, the realest, the coolest, the trillest, young king. Only YouTube platforms. Only YouTube platforms as we speak. Welcome back from the lit banger, gang. Hold on. All right. So we got um, 10 rappers that predicted their own demise. All right. Um, I don't know why I came across this, but I don't know. You know, it's just something I want to check out, man. Um, it's probably going to get yellow marked because they don't like when, you know, certain things get brought up. So. But we're going to go ahead and check it out. If you're new, subscribe, like the video, comment some more bangers on me, check out. And let's go ahead and jump right into this one. Bang. Worst thing comes to worst, I f die a tragic death or s And I'm not able to see out my dreams. I at least want to know that the kids perceived my message. Developing right now a search yeah. for a killer in South Florida after an up-and-coming rapper is shot dead. 20-year-old XXX Temptation killed in an Temptation. apparent robbery. Just this year, we've lost a lot of talented rappers for one reason or another. And you'd be surprised to hear that a lot of these rappers predicted their final days. Be sure to watch the entire mm -hmm. video because today we'll be counting down 10 rappers that predicted their passings. Don't forget to turn on post notifications, like, and subscribe to the channel. Number 10, Juice World. Juice World is very much on the uh, mind of people Juice right now because his latest album, Legends Never Die, has officially dropped, which is both good and bad because while it's good to have music from Juice World again, it's a posthumous release. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone? Or a brand new MacBook. Come on, man. They always want to throw these in there. I ain't gonna lie. They trying to get paid. I ain't gonna hate. A rapper. Juice World died in December 2019 after overdosing on. Damn, he died. Five, almost five years ago. That's crazy. While trying to flee officers, trying to search his plane. Now, to be clear, he most certainly didn't predict the rather bizarre amount of circumstances that led to his death. However, he did predict one thing with somewhat chilling accuracy. What's the 27 Club? We ain't making it past 21. In case you didn't know, Juice World died just six days after his 21st birthday. And if you don't get the reference, he was talking about how many rappers were said to never make it to 27 years old. But in recent years, a very disturbing trend that includes our next entry found that. I think King Von was 26 when he passed. Damn. FBG Duck, too. Y'all don't really know about Duck for real, because Duck was more um, kind of smaller when in the, in the Chicago scene, but he was still bigger than life, though. Many rappers die before they're even 21, or they'll die when they are 21. And now Juice World can be added to the list. While some may not see this as a true prediction, you can't deny that it's very accurate. His words also led to someone believing that he faked his own death because he noted one time, my goal is to get overly famous, shine for a couple of years, and then fake my death. To be clear, we don't believe that Juice World faked his own death, but a lot of people honestly do because of how he went out and the somewhat mysterious circumstances that surrounded his passing. Either way though, he- Bro, if that was the case and he was to ever come back, People, people probably wouldn't fuck with him for real. I ain't gonna lie, because that's sad. You had people crying, mourning over you, bro. And you gonna fake your shit? He noted that he wasn't making it past 21, and he was sadly very right on that account. Number nine, XXX Tentacion. Despite it being almost two years since his passing, X is still being honored by his fans as well as fellow rappers through posthumous collaborations like with Lil Pump and Lil Wayne. But in his song "Sad," he may have hinted that his death was coming soon, but not in the way he intended. Who am I? Yeah, I, I'm going to react to that one with him in the casket. I don't know if I did that song. What's that song with him in the casket? That, that, that was crazy. Now, that kind of was a prediction. Right Someone there. that's afraid to let go. You decide if you're ever going to let me know. Suicide if you ever try to let go. I'm sad, I know. I'm sad, I know. In the song, he's singing about the loss of a loved one. But here, it can be taken that if he ever lost his girl, his life would be the next to go. Sure enough, he did lose his longtime girlfriend, and then his life was taken. Not by his own hand, mind you, but someone did take it. And many in the world were sad. Plus, in the music video for Sad, there was a part where he saw himself in a casket, which is a reference to how many movies and TV shows show the spirits of people looking at themselves when they're gone at their funerals. As teased earlier, X is part of the 21 Club, and just as ironic, Juice World was one of the rappers who was hit the hardest by the passing for various reasons, not the least of which was that the two were friends and had sung songs together, and even Juice World admitted a while after the death that it hadn't hit him yet that X was gone. It also should be noted that X also had rumors that he was actually alive because of various inconsistencies in the case surrounding his passing. But again, it's very clear that he is. No, nah, X has definitely passed away, bro. R.P. X. He was, I felt like he was changing his life around through all the BS. I know that he had a lot of BS around his name, but I feel like he was really trying to change his life for the better, especially because he had a son on the way game. Gone, but the rap world at large wishes that he had stayed around because they felt he still had so much to offer. Worst thing comes to worst, I die a tragic death or some, and I at least want to know that the kids perceived my message. 
8, Notorious B.I.G. In the 90s, there were two rappers on opposite sides of the United States that were dominating the rap industry. One was Tupac Shakur, and the other was Biggie Smalls, aka Notorious B.I.G. The irony of this particular prediction was that it wasn't the first time that Biggie Smalls rapped about dying. He honestly did it a lot in some very interesting ways. But when he wrote the track Suicidal Thoughts, it was clear that something was different, as he had the line, I'm glad I'm dead, I swear to God I feel like death is calling me. He was right. For a little while after that, Biggie Smalls went to the Soul Train Awards, and when he left the event, he was caught in a drive-by that took his life from him. This left many wondering if he well and truly knew that he was going to pass on this way, and that's why he wrote it in the song. But just as tragic as the loss of Biggie Smalls is the fact that the person or people who took shots at him were never caught. The investigation happened, but no true suspects were arrested or truly charged with the crime of taking Biggie's life. To this day, it's an unsolved mystery, and many movies and TV series have tried to block out how it happened, who might have done it, and more. But as of right now, the mystery is unsolved, and justice for Biggie, his family, and his followers hasn't been given, which makes it all the more ironic that he basically predicted his death and saying, I feel like death is calling me, is a rather chilling thing to say in a song, no matter the context. Then to have the premonition of sorts coming forth and being real, that's sad. And not unlike the previous entry, Biggie Smalls had a lot to give to the world of rap. You almost have to wonder what would have happened if he was still alive and able to influence more people. What could have been different? How long would he have gone in the industry? Would he have been an even bigger star? Mysteries abound. And if you don't know, now you know. 7. Mac Great. Miller Mac Miller is a very curious R. case R. in the Mac rap world. He had many hit songs, had a very public relationship with Ariana Grande, and yet in 2018 his life was lost due to overdose. And when put next to his song and music video, Self Care, you have to wonder if he knew all along that this was the way he was going to go out. The music video for Self Care mostly focused on Miller being trapped in a coffin underground, and only at the end did he escape to live his life again. But perhaps that was an illusion. Maybe he did that to not worry fans about what he could do not so long after. And in the song Self Care, he sang, can't trust no one can't even trust yourself yeah. In part, he was referencing Grande, who dumped him and then bashed on him on social media. But he also knew that he couldn't trust himself, and he was right, for it was by his own hand, and he did take the substances, that he passed. The irony of this particular death is many fold, not the least of which is because when he did pass, Ariana Grande mourned very openly for him. And many. I don't remember her speaking on him after they broke up. I thought he was like saying, not talking down on her, but just speaking about the situation, and she was keeping quiet. I didn't know that she was talking shit about him though if, if that's the case do y'all know i don't know interpreted that she felt if she was still with him, he would still be around. She even sang him a eulogy of sorts in her song Thank You Next, where she called him my angel and lamented that he wasn't around anymore. There's no doubt that Mac Miller had some mental problems, but the question really was, could he have been given the help he needed? It's hard to say mental illnesses are something that can be helped with, but the person needs to want to get better, and Mac Miller clearly didn't feel that as he was willing to overdose in order to feel better, or maybe more accurate, walk what? out the pain. While he is he tweaking, gang. I feel him, but then I'm like, I don't, depending on how, how far he was though. But sometimes, man, you just feel like that's the only option. And it sucks that it has to get that far, but I, I've been there. I know. And now, maybe he can serve as a life lesson on what not to do when you're hurting. Number 6. Tupac Shakur Tupac is one of the most Tupac. revered and respected legends in all of rap, and his death, very soon after the death of Biggie Smalls, no less, rocks the rap community very hard. Love in back fact, like many wondered how rap would carry on without the two of them. They were icons, they were legends, and they were inspirations for the next several generations of rap. But what might be the most creepy things about his death is that a mere two months before... That motherfucker talk about his death all the time literally all the time so it wasn't really nothing it wasn't surprising really i mean it was surprising but like it was like damn he called that shit what happened tupac sang this on the track done changed i've been shot and murdered can you tell how it happened word for word but best believe gonna get what they deserve this is indeed what happened and that's what happened that niggas got what they deserve all three the three months that 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 you know they all passed away in like five years or less the only one that's still around is Keefy D. He ain't bust back shit, so. The Tupac, as he was leaving an event and was getting into his car, his security car with his girlfriend drove away, and then a drive-by occurred, fulfilling the prophecy of what he sang, or did it. Obviously, if we're going to talk about Tupac and his demise, we have to talk about the fact that most people don't think that Tupac is actually gone, mainly because there's a whole string of odd coincidences and events that happened after he was declared gone at the hospital. That's right, he didn't pass in the car. They made it to the hospital and he passed a few days later, or so they claim. Many note that his funeral was incredibly small due to a sudden passing, and that it was a closed casket funeral. This and other events have fueled speculation that he is in fact alive and that he's living somewhere else ready to make his comeback if and when he's ready. This is honestly- Bro, the nigga is, would be like 52 right now, bro. <laughs> if he wanted to come back, I think he would have came back already.
What the hell? One of the more prevailing conspiracy theories in the United States today. But if his passing is true, it's eerie that he predicted it in that song with such clarity. But the irony though is that whoever committed the act didn't get what they deserved. For though there have been suspects, none of them have been officially arrested and sentenced for the crime of taking Tupac's life. And if you're hearing similar things, yeah, that's exactly what happened to Biggie Smalls too. Why weren't these deaths solved? How could they not be? Many have dared to ask these questions, but no answers have been given. Five big F Everybody knows who did Tupac, and I just spoke on it. L. One of the biggest crimes that can happen big in the L. world is having a life taken before that person's true potential can be given to the world. Lamont Coleman was a rapper known as Big L, and it was clear from a young age that he was going to be a star in the rap world. He started making tracks and beats when he was but a teenager, and then he released his true debut album at the age of 21. While he was working on his second album, which was highly anticipated, his life was taken from him. The album itself, not unlike many rappers that would follow a similar path out of life, was released posthumously, and in it was a song called casualties of a dice game and in that song was the following lyrics i got weak and fell on my rear now i can hear the sirens that means here comes the jakes but it's too late i'm knocking on the pearly gates this song was obviously Damn. made before his passing and that makes the lines even more eerie and how they accurately predict his impending passing his life was taken in a drive-by in harlem new york where he lived in february 1999 many consider Damn. him a young legend and one that sadly won't get to become a full grown number four blade icewood not every rapper who predicts their own passing is a legend in the game on the worldwide stage, but that doesn't mean that they're not known. If you look up Blade Icewood, you won't find a lot of worldwide recognition, but in Detroit, he was a legend in every sense. Detroit has a deep connection with rap, especially because of the underground scene which spawned Eminem in that underground in yeah, that city, but that would eventually know. cost him very dearly. For you see, the dark part of rapping is that there is a lot of hate between some of the people in the genre, and Blade Icewood was in a literal war with another rapper called Wipeout. The conflict was so great that a bullet crippled Blade Icewood. He lived, but he was paralyzed and likely wouldn't be able to walk again. Wipeout's life was taken not long after, and many including Icewood noted that it was likely in retaliation for what he did to Icewood, but the story doesn't Damn. stop there. Not long afterward, Blade Icewood released a track called All To You, and he put all of his anger and frustration about the incident that got him paralyzed on the track, and in it, he said, next time you better take me out. He was clearly furious that the event didn't take his life, but left him with living a half-life. Damn, that is sad, bro. Bullet make you paralyzed. It's like, damn, do you wish you was gone or are you going to keep going? Because, you know, I don't know. If, I mean, I don't even want to know. Knock on wood how I feel to be like that, bruh. But it's got to be bad. Horrible. I mean, you still alive. You still can enjoy, you know, your family. But, like, hey, you're going to need somebody to help you every day. And I'm pretty sure now they probably can help him walk a little bit. But I don't know. Sadly, the people who likely heard him the first time heard this call out. So a few months later, they came back and did indeed take his life. The lesson here, be careful with- They popped a, a nigga in a wheelchair, bro. That's crazy. He was, he was, they already did the dirt, bro. They already did the damage. Now, honestly, I think he probably wanted to go anyway. He just wanted them to do it his, himself instead of him. So that's probably, that. he probably asked them to do it. And they probably, they probably obliged and did it for him. And he was probably thankful. Not gonna lie what you wish for. Number three, Proof. How's this for a very odd set of circumstances? There was a Detroit rapper named Proof, and his life was taken from him in 2006. But it wasn't just the rapper who sang about his own passing. Two other rappers did as well. One was a group by the name of D12, and then the legend himself, Eminem, sang a song about Proof passing. Their first drop of the notion came during the collaboration between D12 and Proof called 40 Ounces. During Proof's lines, he talks about getting into a fight at a club, and then his life being taken as a result. Pretty harmless, right? Especially- That's exactly what what happened oh my god that's wow now that exactly since happened. it was two years before proof's passing but then one year later eminem came out with a song called toy soldiers and in the music video for the track a friend of eminem's is taken out in a drive-by and eminem can't do anything but watch one of the lyrics that predicted the death was i'm in the club to beef you gotta murder me there sure enough proof was taken by a drive-by in front of a detroit club in 2006 coincidence irony fate or something more you tell me in the comments down below number two chinks drugs french montana is doing very well by himself in the rap game and in other business ventures, but he did once ride with a crew called the Coke Boys, and one of the people in that crew was a man slash rapper named Chinks Drugs, and while he was associated with French Montana, he was earning his own name in the world because of his songs and their content. A lot of his tracks were about hardships that he had suffered, such as growing up in a very rough Queens, New York, but one of the biggest things he did was make a song called Maybe, where he vented about how the rough lifestyle his friend had lived, which was very similar to his own, had taken his life. He poured all his emotions into the song and sang, certain things in life just go unexplained, deaths assured 
sure thing. Kids left to hold your name. This for my homies on the other side. We see you short, but try hard not to my stride. Shy steep my high. Put the keys in the ignition and jump in the ride. Just trying to find a peace of mind. Trying to take a peace of mind. All of this clearly screamed that he felt he would be going to the next life himself soon. And in 2015, that promise came true. Number one, Dalla. Another rapper that was gone too soon, Dalla, had his life taken. Nigga, that like Ty Dolla Sign. That ain't Ty Dolla Sign. That look like Ty Dolla Before he could ever release his first true album. But even though he never released it when alive. Nigga, that was Ty Dolla Sign. I was finna say, hell no, Ty Dolla Sign ain't uh, get pop. What the hell? The tracks were eventually released, including the track Georgia Nights, about his life in Atlanta and the life that he had there. In the track, he sang about how his fate was likely already sealed. Waking up in cold sweats, having dreams of going out with a bang. My papa died by the gun, all die by the gun. And if I ever have a son, he'll probably die by the same. They say the good die young, so I must be on my way. Sadly, he was right. His life was taken in Los Angeles in 2009. And there you have it, a look at 10 very different, yet very identical rappers who found themselves predicting their own deaths. And you believe that this happened to so many, which of these deaths was the most shocking to your mind let us know in the comments down below be sure to subscribe and i'll see you next time on the channel worst thing comes to that's crazy r.i.p all those guys man they uh passed away way too soon man um y'all put your comments down below man put r.i.p or something man if you're new subscribe like the video comment some more bangers show me check out till next time you boys out we gone